Last week, I had pretty much nothing but bad luck trying to get that Spark Station 10 working. So this week, hopefully I'll have a little bit better luck adding some upgrades to this Spark Station 5. Over the summer, I picked up a bunch of very cool upgrades for this Spark Station 5. And while the Spark Station 10 is away having a couple spa days to clean up organic matter, <laughs> I figure I may as well go ahead and, and upgrade this. Now I have three major upgrades, well, two major upgrades and one minor upgrade that I'm going to perform in this video, but I'm only gonna do two of them initially and I'll circle back around and do the third one, which is actually the most significant a little bit later. I wanna make sure the other things work first and kind of do it step, step by step. So let's go ahead and get started. I already loosened the screws on the back of this. Let's see if I can do this without, okay. So the first upgrade, the easy upgrade is I have the correct, very, very yellowed uh, CD-ROM drive for this. It is a Toshiba, Toshiba model XM 4101B. This was the same model that I, I mentioned in the previous video, and this has, you know, the actual Sun model numbers. So this is legit the right thing. And this should be e as easy as just popping that out and connecting this up because it's already, I'm looking at it, it looks like it's already jumpered properly for no termination and SCSI ID6. Now, one thing about these drives that I have been told is they are single speed drives and they generally do not like um, recorded CDs, CDRs. So I don't know how how actually useful ta -da, this upgrade will be, but it is what it is. And I'll have to figure out if I can, can I stow that in here? I'll have to figure out some place reasonable to, to stow this so that I don't lose it. Now the other upgrade is much more fun and that's gonna to be to replace the uh, CG6 video card that's in here with the nice direct memory video card. Now this is uses the exclusive bus that only exists on the Spark Station 5s and the 4s maybe. So it's a 24-bit card I'm curious how the performance is going to be because on the one hand, it has no no hardware acceleration, whereas the uh, CG6 does have hardware acceleration, but it uses this faster um, memory bus. So it has much faster direct access from the CPU to the video card. But on the other, other hand, it's also 24 bits. So I I don't know how well this is going to perform in practice. And I suspect, is that lined up properly? Yeah, that looks good. I suspect it will depend quite a bit on the application. Um, okay. <laughs> well, that was a little bit boring. I mean, that's it for the hardware install of this part. So now I should be able to just boot up. Now there is one quirk when starting this up in order to have the upgrades actually take effect, but I'm gonna show that from the other angle. So I'll have to uh, maneuver things around a little bit. So straight away, we can see one good thing. It's detected the card. I'm gonna break out of this. So kind of the blessing and the curse of Unix systems is everything is a file. The way that you communicate with devices is through files. And on old Unix systems like Solaris, these are actual files stored on the disk. So when you change hardware, something has to happen to create those, those special uh, magic files that are called device nodes. Now on Linux and other modern systems, this ha they aren't real files, they're a pseudo file system. It gets populated automatically and life is good. But on here, we have to do a special step. I'm gonna do two steps right here um, to 
create those files. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure that the new SCSI drive is detected. The, the SCSI CD-ROM. And yay, it's properly detected. So now on Solaris, the way to get it to rebuild the device file system is to boot with dash R. And now it's going to go through and reboot. And through the magic of editing, there will be a huge jump cut here <laughs> to, to go to the fun part where it actually um, shows up. I'll, I'll sh show a little bit here because it's going to log some information about that it's, that it's um, creating the device files. Any second. <laughs> and each time as far as i'm aware each time uh interesting it's oh it says it in a bit each time the video card gets changed i'm kind of pointing at the video card even though it's about a mile out of frame uh this okay so here it is configuring devices and then next it'll be configuring slash dev um each time the video card gets changed or any other piece of hardware gets added you, this step has has to has to be done to get to get it to to create all the devices. Otherwise, when you boot up, it will try to start X and it will look X Windows and it will try to look for the old graphics card and say, ah, we couldn't. Everything's terrible and it'll crap out and you'll just have console. Um, <laughs> the dirty secret is I already I already did this once and kind of botched it, so I had to do it again. And so the files. <laughs> are actually there uh, so I couldn't show it it failing I mean I could probably probably have gone in and manually deleted the files or maybe done a reinstall but I I didn't I, I didn't feel like mucking about with it trust me you need to do this <laughs> all right we'll, we'll cut in a moment here to actually start it up in in X all right now it's gonna spawn the X server and this will take a bit Ooh, pretty. All right, so let's have a look at this and see see how this feels anyway. Because this card, like I said, has no acceleration, so I'm not sure. It's going to create a bunch of windows. This part's always excruciatingly slow. All right, so the real test is what. Uh, hmm. So it doesn't feel terrible. Yeah, I mean that updates pretty decently. All right, so this seems this seems okay. All right. But there's really only one test of what what graphics performance might be. And of course, that is doom. <laughs> I mean, come on, you knew it was going to be So what I'm going to do is, oh, that's right. There's a bunch of other stuff you have to set up. I, need, I, have, I have a script for this. What I'm going to do is um, I am going to benchmark Doom in a whole bunch of configurations. And I'm also, I think I also am going to benchmark uh, Quake because there is a version of Quake for this. Uh, and it still barfs out. Oh, that's not good. So Doom doesn't want to run on on the 24-bit card. Well, that's a huge bummer. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, it's all right. Well, so then does, does, does Quake run then? That is weird. Uh... Uh, yeah, we'll just run it with default parameters. No, it does not want to run. Okay, 
I'm gonna, <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. I'm gonna play around with this off camera and see if I can get these to actually work. Well, I tinkered with this a bit more. Uh, I got Quake running. I was just being foolish. I was passing it a visual ID that doesn't exist. That was entirely my mistake. It works exactly the way it should. Doom, however, still will not run. And both the the special DGA version that is the is able to write directly to the frame buffer and just regular old X Doom just crap out in the same way. I really uh, <laughs> I really don't know what the issue is here. Um, and this is especially bad or especially annoying uh, because. In the documentation that comes with it. Uh, where is it? Somewhere in here. Talks about a bunch of parameters and things to use. It specifically calls out the TCX graphics adapter, which is the one that I have. Like, oh yeah, you should use one of these because they're faster. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah it's fast it it fails out back to the command line in just you know wicked fast time <laughs> i don't know what to do about this um i guess i guess it doesn't work uh you know maybe at some point because i don't see any other i don't see any other useful information in here about how to how to make it faster or how to make it you know behave in different ways to to get it to run so i am stumped uh, if you have any other ideas <laughs> please comment below i would love to hear them otherwise at some point uh you know the source code for this is available i might just try rebuilding it from source and playing around with it i mean if it's just bugs i i can fix bugs <laughs> this is a thing i can do uh that will be interesting also because i'll surely be using a newer compiler than this was built with since this was built in 94 and surely Surely GCC of, you know, whatever the, the version was that I that I built for this this machine um, is much newer than they were probably using the the Sun compiler and maybe it generates better code. So it'll be better anyway. I don't know that. <sighs> that is an adventure for another day, maybe, maybe for Doom December. We'll see. We'll see how things go. Um, but now it's time to do the other upgrade and hopefully that will be less annoying and less disappointing all right let's shut this down and let's give it a go the next upgrade is significant it is a completely new motherboard <laughs> the big difference with this one is Instead of the pokey little 85 megahertz CPU, this has a 170 megahertz CPU and some L2 cache. So it should be literally double the performance. So I'm going to go ahead and extract the old motherboard and put the new motherboard in. Uh, these all come apart. This should come apart in a pretty similar fashion to the um, where was the keep there it is to the uh, Spark Station Ten, and so now that I've done that a few times, this should go pretty smoothly. Hopefully, famous last words, of course. There's not too many connectors or things on this motherboard. How does this want to come undone? No, just straight off. Okay. I'm going to give you a nice... I kind of like this technique on some of these cables that are hard to get at. They put a little pull thing on here so you can get a grip on it and extract it because that does not have very much play in it. 
and then should just be these two screws on the back, which are captive screws. Also such a nice design. And then this should just slide out. One last connector. All right. Out with the old. In with the new. Is this oh put in the little screw I'm not gonna tighten this in all the way just want it to to hold on to it so it doesn't slide around while I'm trying to install stuff I just put all the connectors back on in the reverse order. Now it is my understanding that this should just work. Oops. I put the memory chips in the correct orientation. That always helps. So that is a bummer about the 24-bit um, the graphics card. I wonder, I mean, I suppose it's entirely possible that that card might work better, work differently on this board. Maybe there's an update to Solaris that there's, it's just some bug in the system software. I don't know, but that is all very bizarre to me. Uh, which also makes me wonder, so I have also have the uh, the ZX video board that I'm gonna try out later on. Later on, I don't know when exactly. A while. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be a bit before I get to it. Okay, let's see. All these connectors, memory is seated properly. That's in properly. Okay, let's hook up the stuff on the back. Anyway, so the the ZX card. Uh, in addition to having some, you know, very rudimentary 3D acceleration is also a 24-bit card. So I'm wondering if this is some kind of an issue with cards that are 24-bit only. I wonder if there's a way, I wonder if there's a way I can configure the X server for that driver so that it will just show up as an 8-bit card. Sometimes, sometimes that's a thing. All right, I'm going to... I'm going to just turn this on and see if it, if everything spins up and then I'll rearrange the camera so we can see, so we can see if stuff actually comes up on the, on the screen. <laughs> All right. Well, so far those noises are good. That is good enough for me. I'm going to flip flop this around and uh, we'll give it a try for real. Yay. So first boot up, one thing I did off camera was I changed, I swapped the, the PRAM batteries um, because I know that the one that was in the other motherboard is all configured and ready to go. And I don't know, I know that this one is good, um, but I don't know what state it's in or if it'll boot up. And I just, I want this to go as, oh, this looks good so far. I, I, I want this step to go as smoothly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> my my dream of dreams is that this will just boot up and actually I might need to do stop a um, uh, boot. I don't know for sure that I need to do this since the hardware shouldn't be different, but it feels better to be safe than than sorry. Uh, Why is it this? This is the thing I hate about these. Uh, what is it? Well, 
Let's try again. Well, this looks good. It's starting to load the operating system. So hopefully, right about this point, <laughs> there'll be a jump cut to this being fully booted into X Windows and everything being happy. But we'll see. Because the rest of this boot process takes a while and is very boring to watch and I am not thinking of additional interesting things to say to just fill the time. So I won't. Yay! And it, like, completely booted. All right. Uh, this time I'll actually rem remember to type in the correct password. Instead of typing in a correct password for the wrong user. <laughs> uh, that's... Difficult to say. I don't know if this feels any faster or not. The The real proof will be... And this part certainly doesn't seem... still feels painful. So the, the real test will, of course, be uh, running the benchmarks. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and start the, uh, the Quake benchmark since I, I expect that Doom will still... Uh, will still fail on, on this system because it still has the... Uh, the same video card in it, so let's uh, we'll we'll run Quake and and see how it goes. Oh, that didn't doesn't look good. Oh, that's gloriously terrible. <laughs> God. Huh. All right, more tinkering to do. It turns out that yet again, the problem with Quake was operator error on. But the other motherboard, no matter which video card was installed, I needed to tell it Visual ID 34 because there's... So Quake tries to look at the available visuals and tries to guess which one is the right one to use. But there's a, several that are kind of similar. So it picks the first one and spews out some warning messages. Uh, in my scripts, I just hard-coded in 34 and that was correct even on this video card on the previous motherboard but now it is magically changed to 32. The other thing in general that I've noticed about this version of Quake is so it has this option pixel multiply which basically it just it will render at one size but when it copies it to the window it will expand it by this multiply factor. Um, if I specify one, pretty much no matter what I do, it ignores what I say for window size. And it just says, ah, you're going to get 320 by 200, perhaps multiplied. But it's going to, so I'm going to run this and it's going to do a bunch of resizes. And I noticed that if I specify some large value, it basically the window that it creates is half this size. Instead of one times this size, it's a half this size. But the frame rate that it renders at is as though it's rendering the full 640 by 480. So I, I did this before with um, 800 by 600. And it creates a window that's 400 by 300 and runs very slowly. I've done this with uh, 640 by 400, and it makes a window that's 320 by 200, but it runs much, much more slowly than if I just ran it with pixel multiply one and let it make a 320 by 200 window. So, more bugs. <laughs> so here's here's what what this does. Um, and it was the right size, and then it like went small, and I so I don't I don't know what the deal is. I might have to build this from source and tr 
try to fix bugs in this too. Or maybe just, you know, this version of Solaris, you know, the build of X that's on it is just totally wonky. I, I don't know. Pretty much all of my, <laughs> all of my many years working on the X server and working on X client software were on Linux and were years and years and years after this version of this software. I know people who worked on this. <laughs> I can bug them. They won't remember. But anyway, so here we are. So now I'm just going to go up and run a bunch more benchmarks on this card and on the other card. I'll put this card in this, in this system and generate a whole big pile of data that will not include Doom on this. I still cannot get it to run. It's driving me nuts. I definitely would welcome any suggestions about how to make any of this stuff work better. <laughs> There's not a lot to say about these benchmark results, so I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time talking over top of them. There is pretty significant scaling at low resolution in Doom from the 85 megahertz CPU to the 170 megahertz CPU. It's not double, but it is a pretty substantial speed up. Um, the CG3 is definitely the slower card. Uh, the, the CG6 is just slightly faster at, at every scale. Um, and there's not a lot more to say about that. I mean, the huge disappointment is that I could not run this benchmark on the TGX or the TCX card. Uh, I really had high hopes for that. It was supposed to be, you know, the, the VESA local bus of, of 32 bit spark systems. And it just, you know, gave me the middle finger <laughs> in, in, at least in, in doom in quake. Um, the results are surprising in a different way than the doom results. Uh, there is almost perfectly linear CPU scaling at the one X scale, uh, at the two X scale, it's not quite double, but it's pretty close. At least on the CG six, the CG three falls pretty far behind here. But the real surprise is that the TCX is slower than the CG six. This was supposed to be the card that had just all the awesome bandwidth. And I guess the eight bit to 24 bit translation just is not enough to compensate. It just, I was really surprised. I reran the TCX benchmarks multiple times on both processors just to make sure something wonky wasn't going on. But the data is what the data is. I, I don't know what else to say. I am going to try to spend a little bit more time, uh, see if there's some tweaks or adjustments or some other things to do with this video card to maybe, maybe get Doom working and maybe get Quake running a little bit faster. I don't know, but this is surprising and, and frankly disappointing to me. That was a little bit more successful than the uh, Spark Station 10 efforts last week, but it still wasn't great. Hopefully I'll get some of the other issues with that 24-bit card sorted out and I'll actually be able to run Doom on it. I'm kind of not impressed with it in general. Uh, I was, you know, supposed to be this great performer with, you know, this high memory bandwidth and stuff, and that just did not, that did not show up in those benchmarks. They're not ideal applications for that card but still next week my video will cover portland retro gaming expo which i will be at this whole weekend so hopefully i'll be able to get you know do some editing put something together sunday night monday and hopefully get something out on tuesday fingers crossed we'll see how how tired i am after the show it's always a lot of fun if you're anywhere near close to Portland, go to the expo. It is it is more awesome than you think it is. So, until next time, try to remember the good stuff. <laughs>